have no idea what this is, but after everything I went through to get here, I'm taking it. I should probably start looking for an air pocket. <gasps> I can't go anywhere. I've still got this wetsuit on. Ah! A rat! Hey! My book on codes is missing! It's too late to go anywhere now.
These doodles sure look familiar. Sonny. Sonny June did them. He must have been Minette's last assistant. Wow, that guy gets around. Mademoiselle Drou, what is it now? If you had to name Minette's worst enemy, who would that be? Ugo, without a doubt. Not only do he and Minette have similar design styles, so that they are constantly competing for the same coup de clients, but both of them are unthinking, socially inept egoists. It is a rare week that goes by without one of them insulting the other. Has it ever gone beyond words? Not to my knowledge. You ask very curious questions, Mademoiselle Drew. They make me think you know more than you are saying. And as a member of the press, I'm not sure that I like that. Do you have a real office somewhere? When I'm writing my column, I go to my office at Glam Glam. When I'm researching my column, I come here. I have my telephone, which can do everything save things in Marseillaise, good food, and a chair for whomever stops by. How can I contact this Hugo Butterly person? His phone number is right here in my digital assistant. Of course, it's extremely unlikely that you will be able to talk to him in person. Even I occasionally have trouble penetrating the wall of sycophants that surrounds him. So, what else do you wish from me? I'd better get going. A tout à l'heure. Mr. Butterly? Who is this? Well, it's obviously not who you think it is. My name's Nancy Drew. I don't know any Nancy Drew. I'm a kind of a friend of Minette's. Her, I know. Is that smelly cheese by any chance going to her? Whatever for? Neither she nor her work needs any help from me to stink. Now, if you'll excuse me, whoever you are, I'm going to hang up. Goodbye, then. No, wait. I just want to... Rats.
Bonjour. No, Nancy. George, go get on the other line, quick. It's Nancy. And remember, talk fast. She's calling all the way from France. So where are you? What have you seen? How do you like Paris? What's Minette like? Have you learned how to design clothes? Beth, slow down. You don't have to talk fast, okay? My dad bought me a phone card and told me to make as many calls as I want. Oh, great. Hi, Nance. What's going on? How's Paris? Have you seen the Louvre? What about the Eiffel Tower? How many famous people George, have you met? three words. Prepaid phone card. Oh, great. Hey, perfect timing. We were just about to go for a run. Whoa, wait a minute. A run? Jog. I meant jog. But you said run. I meant jog. You know how I feel about the R word, George. Jog. We're going for a jog, Bess. Honest. So, Nance, tell us about Minette. Well, she's very high-strung. Why do you say that? Well, the first time I walked into her office, I was almost decapitated by the potted plant she'd just thrown. She threw a potted plant at you? Before she even knew you? That was rude. Actually, she was throwing it at Heather, her assistant. Oh, and Bess, according to Minette, when something is cool, she says it's totally rude. Rude. You know, that's got a ring to it. He is one rude dude. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna start saying that. I took this very strange phone call from Annette. At least I tried to. What was so strange about it? The guy wouldn't give me his name, and he sounded very hostile, and he had a German accent. And, not long after that, some unknown person sent Minette a box of cockroaches. Ew, yuck. Tell me about it. They got loose all over her office, and she made me find them and put them back in the box. Double yuck. Did any kind of note come with them? Nope. Sending anonymous letters is one thing, but sending live vermin? Sounds to me like things are getting personal. Yeah, let's just hope they don't start to get deadly. It turns out that one of the threatening letters Minette got was sent by none other than her own assistant, Heather McKay. You're kidding. Why would she do that? I have no idea. Guess I'm going to have to ask her. Just be careful. Maybe Minette's flakiness is contagious. Well, I'll let you guys go. Keep us posted. Talk to you soon. Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? As in Drew? I thought you were in France. I am in France. Frank! Pick up the phone down there. It's Nancy Drew calling from France. Everything okay? Everything's great. <sighs> hey, Nancy. Hi, Frank. Whoa, you sound out of breath. Not out of breath, out of shape. Me? Hey, you're the one who's been taking a break for the last two hours. Break from what? Carrying furniture upstairs. Carpet layers are coming to redo the basement tomorrow, so we gotta get everything out. And I use the term we loosely. Hey, I'm pacing myself here. You're in the kitchen eating jelly donuts, aren't you? Not anymore. Well, I made it to Paris, okay? Great. Exactly where are you? Right now, I'm in the Latin Quarter. Wait a minute. I thought you were in France, not Central America. She's in the Latin Quarter of Paris, Joe, not Latin America. They call it the Latin Quarter because it's where the Sorbonne University is. And until 1793, Latin was the area's official language. Oh. What are you doing there? I'm in the apartment Amy Grunhild arranged for me. In fact, did I tell you who my roommate is? Is it somebody we know? Jing Jing Ling. Jing Jing Ling? The model? You're rooming with J.J. Ling, the famous Australian model? Yep. You're not talking about me, are you? Oh my gosh, that was her? That was J.J. Ling? Joe, just calm down. I'm calm. I'm very calm. I am completely calm. The heck you are down. You're hyperventilating.
Minette's studio is something else. Before you left, you mentioned it was an old windmill or something? Right. It's in an old moulin. That's French for windmill. Like that cabaret to Moulin Rouge. Exactly. And like the Moulin Rouge, Minette's windmill is in the section of Paris called Montmartre. The outer office looks like any other modern office, but Minette's studio, which is inside the Moulin itself, is very old and funky. How long has she been there? I'm not sure. Wonder what it was used for before Minette moved in. Yeah, you'd think somebody would have torn it down by now and built a bunch of condominiums. Or is it condominia? Parts of Paris are real quaint, like you can buy stuff from these vendors in the park, but if you want to get a good deal, you have to haggle with them. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a pain. Oh, Frank, where's your spirit of free enterprise? What kind of stuff do they have, Nancy? Everything imaginable. It's like a garage sale, only in a park. I love garage sales. I hate garage sales. Plus, their inventory is always changing, so people keep going back to them just to see what new stuff they have. I wish haggling was common in this country. There's nothing better than feeling like you've gotten yourself a really good deal on something. And when somebody rips you off? Nobody rips me off, Frank. Okay, except for that bogus concert ticket I bought from Gerald the budding juvenile delinquent Higginbotham in junior high school. But I was young then, very young. Would you guys mind giving me a hint about something? We thought you'd never ask. What would you like us to tell you? Would you happen to know what I'm supposed to do with that round thingamajig I found at the end of those flooded tunnels? I suggest you take a good look around that studio of Minette's. All you have to do is stay centered. After all, that thingamajig has to fit in somewhere. The Hardy Boys come through again. Naturally. See you, Nance.
Bonjour, mademoiselle. You will ask to return. I have many new things. You see? Yes, you do. I could use a French-English dictionary. How much? This is the best French-English dictionary you can buy in all of Paris. Not too big, simple to use, hundreds and hundreds of words. I practically give it to you for 30 euros. How about 23 euros? It is yours. What else appeals to you? I could use a flashlight. Mine was in my lost luggage. That is only 10 euro. Batteries included. I'll take it. It is yours. What else appeals to you? Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Retons. And she returns with a bottle of Mouton Forte, 1968. Oh la la, you did it. So, I take this and give you this. Take it, you have earned it. Thanks. What else tickles the fancy? Is this pie tin very expensive? Very cheap. 15 euro. I'd rather pay you 8 euros. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour. I have many new things, you see? Well, you sure do. You are sure to find something you like. Is this just regular string? That is very good string. Very strong. Very good to have around. You can buy for only six euros. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? How much are you asking for this steak? That is made of the finest wood, and it can be used for many, many things. It is one of my most popular items. For that reason, I sell for 13 euros. I'll give you 10 euros. Voila! What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Mr. von Schwesterkrank? Are you in there? Who's there? Nancy Drew. I just wanted to ask you some questions. 
I'm very busy. You'll have to come back. But this is really important. Is there anything I can do to help you? Well, if you want, you could take some stock photos for me. Sure. The list of things I need pictures of is on my desk. You can use the camera I let you borrow. I'll get right on it. Oh no, the list is in French. Did you take all of those photos for me? I sure did. They're all right there in your camera. So, you had some questions for me? Why does Jami need those prints? Heather said that he wants to use them to illustrate an upcoming story about modern fabrics. What's your opinion of Minette's assistant, Heather McKay? Heather's a bright girl. Her crush on me is unfortunate, but I can handle it. She has a crush on you? It's obvious to me that she does. Dealing with models the way I do day in and day out, I've gotten pretty good at knowing what women are thinking and feeling. Does Heather know that you know? I've said nothing to her because although there is no chance that I will ever reciprocate her feelings, I see no point in hurting her. Let her have her crush. Eventually she will set her heart on someone else and I will be forgotten. What do you know about Noisette Tornade? The French resistance fighter? I seem to recall reading that she died recently and that's about it. Why do you ask? I know three things, Mr. Von Schwesterkronk. One, Noisette Tornade, whose obituary you were carrying until it fell out of your pocket in the park. Noisette used to own the old windmill Minette now owns. Two, during World War II, she was rumored to have hidden several valuable works of art from the Germans somewhere in Paris. And three, she was romantically involved with a German soldier named Hans. Hans von Schwesterkrank. Oh, yes. I know all those things, too. Hans was my great-uncle. But there are one or two things you don't know, Fräulein. You could not have known that just before he passed away, my great-uncle gave me that. What is it? Something Noisette gave to him. Turn it over and look on the back. Unfortunately, my great-uncle couldn't remember what any of it meant. She used to be the director of public works, so I went to her favorite park to see if anything there might help me figure out what that card means. But I discovered nothing. You can keep that if you want. I can? Yes, I give up. I don't care anymore. Finding that lost artwork is why you started going out with Minette, isn't it? Since Minette owns the Moulin, where Noisette spent most of her life, I thought dating her would help me figure out what that card meant. But then something totally unexpected and tragic happened. I fell in love with her. Minette is one of the cleverest, most infuriating, yet fascinating women I have ever met. Then why aren't you still dating her? Because for reasons known only to her, she broke it off. I thought that if I found that missing artwork, I would be a hero and Minette would change her mind about me. But I can barely keep my mind on my work these days, let alone on finding some mystical treasure. If you want to look for 
Right now, the only thing I'm interested in recovering is Minette. Sulu Ren four one five four. I'll bet those numbers are movable. Going on. Shoot, that pesky squirrel must have jumped on the handle and moved the windmill. Time to get out my flashlight.
Bonjour. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Do you still need someone to paint pictures for you? Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Sure thing. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? Is this Ichido book any good? That book is very good. If you are around dangerous people, then you must get this book. You pay only 23 euros. I'm willing to pay 17 euros for it. Voila! What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. It's just me, Nancy. Uh-oh. What did you say? Nothing. Everything's fine. You just stay in there and keep working. Looks like this thing is set to go off if she opens the door. I've got to figure out how to disarm this thing before she opens the door. 
What are you doing out there? Nothing. Just stay in there. Everything's fine. You're doing something! There. I'm done. I won't bother you anymore, I promise. I better get rid of this thing before she sees it and really freaks. The dials on this thing move. Looks like I should type a message using my own keyboard.